I'm going to cover channels today. This is a price action um, pattern. And it's basically whenever you have two trend lines. Any um, members that have been here for about a year or so, you remember last semester, whenever I first started covering technical analysis, and I started mentioning trend lines, which are basically um, angled support or resistance levels. So a channel is an area between two parallel trend lines. There's three different types. You have a horizontal channel, you have an ascending channel, and you also have a descending channel. Um, to say that a trend line is valid, you want at least two bounces. So you want to see um, a test. Here, I'll draw a little bit. So here is our little uh, stock moving. This is our stock. You want to see at least two tests of, of the trend line on each one. So you can have something like this. And this would be you know, an ascending or uh, horizontal channel. So you want at least two tests on each trend line both support and resistance. I prefer three bounces off each because I like validated patterns. The more bounces or tests that they have off of these trend lines, the higher uh, percentage of probability of a winning trade that you're going to get because it means that traders are seeing the same pattern that you are and it's being right. tested multiple times. And these are great patterns for short-term or medium-term trading. Um, I say trading, not investing, because these are, I'm a swing trader um, slash investor. So I'll go through how you're actually going to trade these patterns, but usually you're going to be in these trades for a week to a month or so. Hey, Jose. Hey, what's up? Take a seat. We just started. Yeah. We just uh, covered um, self-automated self -automated driving bars. Okay, so the first channel that I'm going to cover is the horizontal channel. This one usually happens after a stock has risen an exuberant amount and it needs to kind of cool off, if you would. It's a consolidation pattern. So as you can see here, you can imagine a stock running 20, 30, 100, 200%, and then it needs to kind of cool off, if you would. Um, so this is what we consider a consolidation or a horizontal channel. So you can see here that we do have a two parallel trend lines. And you can see that it's been tested four times from support and two times on resistance, giving it a total of six tests. So how you trade these channels. Um, if you're looking to buy or sell, you want to buy near the bottom channel. So you want to place a buy order or you want to cover a short. I'll go up in a little bit more detail in a second about what that means. But you want to buy towards the end or the uh, bottom of your supporting channel line. Your stop loss, which is um, where you get triggered out, it would be automatically take you out of the position, would be below your lower uh, channel or your supporting channel trend line. Now you would take the position out or sell or short at the very top of the channel. So for instance, if you were a short-term trader and you saw this pattern arising, you wanted a couple tests, maybe you liked it down here, so you would buy in right there. Now you would hold it until it came up and tested this upper trend line. Then you would sell your buy position and you can open up what's considered a, a short, which is betting against the market. If the market falls a dollar, you'd make that dollar. Um, so you can, you'd buy down here, you'd sell your buy, and then you can take a short position. The opposite is true if you're shorting the market. So you can enter a short here, and then you can cover your short um, at the very bottom. So it's a very basic pattern. But I like it because it's based off of price action and it gives you to find take profits and uh, stop losses, which are very important for finding your risk reward ratios. Any questions about any of this? Kind of. I mean, yeah, go ahead. you have like the resistance mm -hmm. and the support levels. Right. You probably want the channel to be parallel or the. the uh, it, in a perfect world, yes, you'd want them to be parallel, but in the real world, patterns aren't going to be necessarily textbook like this all the time. So you might have, you know, I would consider this four bounces. I would consider this one right here, this and that. They're considering it one. Um, it's going to change with each person's price action perception. Um, the only problem with price action is it's arbitrary. You can see something and I 
I cannot see the pattern, or you know, sometimes we will both agree. So it's very much up to the the, the chart master, whoever's marking up the charts. Does that kind of answer your question? Yeah. So in real life, you're going to see, you will get these uh, textbook patterns, but most of the time it's going to be a little bit off. And you'll definitely see that um, whenever I'm covering the head and shoulders later. Okay, so this, this wraps up the horizontal channel. The next one I'm going to cover is an ascending channel. You can guess why it's called ascending, because the stock is ascending and the channel is there to support it. So this is a bullish um, sign because buyers are taking positions at a higher and higher price. So originally buyers found support here and they, they started buying stock here. Then they started buying here, which is at a higher level. And you can continue to see the support level for buyers. The opposite is true for sellers. Um, they're also selling at higher levels. So that's how we kind of get this ascending triangle. The rules for your take profit your stop losses, um, your entries are all going to be the same as the horizontal, but it's going to be at an angle. So you would want a couple tests, you know, depending, you might see this as like three tests or whatever. You might buy in here, take a buy position, your stop loss would go below the trend line, and then your take profit would be near the, uh, the upper channel. You can sell out of your buy right here, take a short position, put your stop loss above the uh, channel, and then you would sell out of or cover your short at the very bottom of the channel. Now this person um, also included candlestick patterns, which are very useful off of bouncing support or resistance levels. If you remember, I did cover some of those. You can look through the PowerPoints to kind of brush up if you're interested in candlestick patterns. So basically, um, the same type of trading strategy as the horizontal. Do y'all have any questions about this one? Pretty straightforward. So What's up with it? When uh, when do you start creating this channel? So after weeks to I mean first two mm -hmm. cycles or right. So it's going to depend on the the person marking up the chart. I personally would like to see. I wouldn't even mark up the chart until probably here, mm -hmm. or probably until all of this has occurred because then I have three tests on the lower trend line. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty well-established trend at that point. And then I also have three tests to my eye of the upper trend line. So at this point, right here, I can start trading the actual channel itself. You don't want to start, you don't want to just connect two random parts. This is my, I think some people make money and are very profitable off two point um, things, but I like to see a well-established trend before I start trading. So if you are only looking for two touches, you can have it maybe here and here, and you can have the two bounces here. So you can actually take in your first position there, as where I would wait until this position. It's going to depend on your personal preference. I suggest that you play around um, and document your trades in your trading journal and kind of see the statistics of win-loss ratios and what you're getting to kind of figure out what works best for you. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so the left half is, uh, that's not where you invest, right? You invest would, on the right, right half. You, so you see the left half, you invest on the right half. Right, so imagine that these trend lines are not here. I wouldn't even find this pattern or consider it valid for my purposes until about this point. And then I, from this point on, I can start trading the pattern. Yeah, you don't know this phase yet, right? I don't anyway. know yeah. anything to the right yet. Yeah. And I want a well-established trend. So I'd wait to two to three bounces off the upper and lower, and then I would look to take a position and start trading the channel itself. So the first position I would personally take if I were marking up this chart and watching it would be right here. I would look at buying at this lower, lower trend right here. After I've been watching and found a valid pattern. And then I could trade from here to there, from there, you know, to down here, or whatever you want. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Any other questions? Cool. This one is called a descending channel. This one, as you imagine, descending because the price is descending. Um, exactly the same trading principles as before. It's just a change of how the price is moving. One, the price is moving horizontal, we're consolidating. One, the price is gaining, and one, the price is losing. 
So one thing that I will mention about these patterns is that you do not want to continue using these kind of rules after the sock is broken out of its channel. You want to disregard all of these and then move on to another trading strategy. And the reason is because this is a swing trading or short slash medium term trading strategy. Whenever a breakout is a completely different strategy than um, these swing trading or short term slash medium term strategies. Does that make sense? Okay, so same thing, I'll walk you through it again. I would wait for probably around here. You could start it, you could take your first position here after you had two touches, um, two touches there. So it's a well-established trend from here. And then you can actually start trading the channel itself. Um, so you would see all this, be watching it, and then you could actually start profiting off these patterns here, as you can see. And again, for a buy, you want your stop loss below your trend line. For a short, you want your stop loss above your trend line. And your take profit will be the opposite side of the channel. Pretty clear? And this looks clear. Can we, uh, at the end, can we actually go to a real world uh, graph and just try to come up with a uh, channel and just suggest us, okay, I would trade here. Right, yeah. okay, yeah, so I actually took one, I found a seven year channel that I posted about a year or two, or not a year, sorry, a month or two ago, it was XLP, which is an ETF for consumer staple. I found it on a weekly chart. Um, it was a seven year trend. So the channel I've been doing, it was an ascending trying for ascending channel, spanning seven years, so from 2011 to current, uh, which is crazy. That one is now, testing its lower support, so we'll see what happens on that. Defense sectors have been getting hit, been getting hit really hard. So again, um, just remember that these, these trades aren't 100% probability of winning. You're gonna have winners and losers. The important thing is minimizing your losses, and that's what price action is great at, because you get a predetermined uh, risk-reward ratio. So I'll, I can pull up um, one after if you're interested in seeing a real life example of a channel that I found. But a lot of stocks, these are pretty common and you can also find them on all time frames. So these channels or patterns can be used by day traders. So you can pull this up on a five minute chart, one minute chart, 10 minute chart, 15, 30, whatever you want. If you're doing intraday trading, you can also use these on day to weekly charts if you're interested in a longer term trade or a swing trade. How often is uh, price action, um, how effective is price action on the stocks that are very sensitive to what happens in the political arena or things around the world every day? Mm. So, you see can you give me an example now? of, you, I'm sure you had a company in mind. But uh, I mean, yeah, I don't, I, I don't have a particular company, uh -huh. but let's say Trump announces something tomorrow mm -hmm. and I'm looking at this chart for that company right. and I'm seeing a trend. Um, does it not just affect the train and just boost it or bump it? So there's a couple different theories. Um, I am not going to share my personal preference, but some of them is that news completes patterns. Um, so you'll have, it's really funny how that works. So sometimes you'll see a stock will be testing its lower support right before earnings, and then it will be earnings magically, and you'll see the news kind of drive the price action. So there's a theory that price price action already has some of the news affected in. Of course, if it's something crazy that nobody could see coming, um, it's gonna be a little bit different, but it's not going to, that's one of the weaknesses of technical analysis that I covered last time, is that it doesn't, um, price in current news or current events that are affecting the stock itself. This, this would be, uh, this price action would be more effective to the stocks on the stocks that are quite uh, secluded from the, you know, things happening, political yeah. events, because they are the, mo they are the mm -hmm. ones that tend to be more, uh, you know, erratic, you know. Not right, you're talking about. about volatility is what I'm getting from you is that uh, Yes, you want medium volatility for these these things to work. You don't want to be in, you're probably not gonna find a channel in like something like Tesla that moves 10, 15%. Yeah. Um, you want something that is pretty pretty slow moving or at least um, pretty consent, 
consistent. Yeah. Does, does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I see. Maybe like a like a paper towel industry or something. Right. So that's why I found it. Yeah, no matter what staples. somebody says, paper towel is going to be used. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I found it with consumer staples. It's because that's like things that you find in Walmart. It's yes. things that we use every day that are con consistently growing. It's not the fastest growing thing, um, but it is growing, and you don't see these massive moves in something like consumer staples. So the channels do appear in things that are more that are lower volatility. Definitely. So, any other questions?